Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Ulysse Nordent Maxi Marine Diver 42.7 millimeters. We'll call it 43 for practical purposes. In 18 karat rose gold, this is a watch that flies the UN flag on two fronts. Now, at the top of the market, this watch really is trading blows with the likes of Audemars Piguet and Hublot in the heavyweight division, your Haute de Gamme sports watch. But then it's also fighting the good fight against the Omegas, the Breitlings, the Rolexes of the world in the mainstream sports watch segment. But the bottom line is that this watch, with a high standard of fit, finish, and clever design, effectively takes the fight to both of those groups, and it does it with style. So on my wrist, which is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see that the watch has a very planted stance. Now, although it is 43 millimeters in diameter, it wears very comfortably. You can see it's about 15 millimeters thick, so this is by no means a low profile watch, although it is fine and beautifully built. It's not a thin watch in any sense. It's as big and bulky as a traditional sports watch. Not quite an offshore or Hublot Big Bang territory, but it definitely cuts a higher profile than any Rolex Submariner, even perhaps a little bit bigger than the Deep Sea Dweller. But on my wrist, which is kind of small, you can see one of the clever design features of this watch that really elevates it ergonomically above the others. Although my wrist is only 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see how Ulysse Nordin uses a double knuckle strap with an intermediate link that effectively becomes a double joint for the conforming end of the strap and the remainder of the strap. Very clever, it allows the conforming end link that leaves no real tangible gap between the case blank and the strap, turns it into something that'll work with a smaller wrist, and that's always been the Achilles heel of the conforming end links on watches like the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, when the strap wants to just project outward. When the strap straddles the side of the case, it holds tight to the case, and it wants to fight the tight curvature of a smaller wrist. You don't get that here, because Ulysse Nordin does a great job of keeping the lugs nice and short. You can see the watch really isn't that much bigger than its 43 millimeter diameter. The lug is exceptionally short, doesn't project out that far from the case. But then you can also see a couple of la layers of ingenuity in the strap. See, you've got that seamless end link, but then you've got a double joint that really allows this to curve comfortably around a wrist. Plus, you're getting the addition of more 18 karat rose gold upping the real craft content of the watch and the number of durable components. But then you can also see how the strap itself, and this gives you a really good view, the strap tapers. So as soon as you start moving away from that link, you can see that the strap becomes very thin indeed. It is a very soft, natural rubber vulcanized piece, so you can bend it just about as much as you care to. It almost has the flexibility of a silicone piece, but the quality of rubber. And then you can see there's a little bit of pleating or bellows here. Let me try to get you, there we go, now you can see it. And that gives the strap even more flexibility as it approaches the clasp. The clasp itself is a masterpiece on two levels, functional and aesthetic. Now you can see inside, there's a brushed titanium double deployment mechanism that's beautifully finished in its own right, very durable, and it adds an interesting, almost gunmetal tone that complements the rose gold in a really artistic, intriguing, and attractive fashion. Now it closes solidly and has a very satisfying snick at closure and you can see that it features a superb brushed finish that's really quite attractive in contrast with the black of the rubber strap and plays nicely against the gunmetal color of the titanium. Double deployant, the nice thing about it is that it's very secure. A lot of times you see sports watches placed on bracelets for the sake of security but when you have a double deployant twin trigger release clasp of this quality, there's no need for a bracelet. And ergonomically, it works to this watch's advantage. Now aesthetically, Ulysse Nordin continues to press its case for true rivalry status against the Hublots and the APs of the upper market segment. You could see that the watch is almost all bezel. Realistically, aside from the lugs, which flare out ever so slightly at the corners, the watch reads as one big bezel surrounding a classical Ulysse Nordin marine chronometer style dial. The bezel is beautiful in as much as it is all gold. There is no inset insert, so it's not as though you're looking at a piece of ceramic or a piece of inserted steel or a piece of inserted PVD aluminum. This is all 
engraved gold, and it's quite beautiful. It has a gorgeous wave style texture to it. All of the numerals and the indices are big and bold and polished to a high sheen. There is a luminescent pearl at 12 o'clock, so you can use this in the fashion of a traditional unidirectional dive bezel. It has a nice detent to it with a real nice audible click as it rotates. And with that luminescent element, you can line up the, the pearl with the minute hand, and now you've got an impromptu chronograph to time intervals from 0 to 60 minutes. Now inside the bezel, you can see the dial keeps the finish upscale, but it also keeps it very functional. The Marine Series, the Marine Diver, and the Marine Chronometer, both COSC certified Swiss chronometers, with a miniature dial layout that recalls the famed marine chronometers with which Ulysse Norden made its name in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Essentially large navigation instruments. The originals were actually closer to the size of this little rooster logo. Big 50-60 millimeter almost desk clock type things that would sit on gimbaled holders in ships navigation centers or bridges. Very accurate but what they had was the essential layout of this dial with a power reserve at 12 o'clock, small seconds at 6 o'clock. The modern innovation is the addition of the jump date, of course, a practical measure that's well worthwhile on a sports watch that you're likely to wear frequently. But it also has a degree of finish that you will not see on the vintage marine chronometers. There is a slight dimpled semi-hobnail, really inverted dimple semi-hobnail treatment to the black lacquered dial. And all of the elements, highly loomed, are applied rose gold, so they're very visible in daylight, low light, or no light. Other high-end high -end refinements, I would call them, include the applied Ulysse Nordin anchor logo and the beautiful color combination of the rose gold elements, the rose gold printing of all the graphical elements, and the small splashes of red, the 1846 marquee on the small seconds, reminding you of when Ulysse Norden was founded the down and the up graphics, the small scripts at the peak of the power reserve indicator. Now the power reserve indicator traces a 42 hour power reserve of the UN caliber 26. We'll get to that in just a moment. But everything about this dial really represents the high point of this marine chronometer diver. The bottom line is that it's gorgeous. It's evocative in as much as it is true to Ulysse Norden tradition, but it does have the standard of finish that you can compare it to something like an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, and it's a fair fight. Outstanding detail. You can really see the texture of the dial and the height of those applied elements, as well as the gleam of the diamond polished rose gold partially skeletonized minute and hour hand. It's a very attractive picture of elegance in a burly, substantial sports watch style case. Now, as with the original marine chronometers, the watch does feature individual numbering on a separate badge on the case flank at 9 o'clock. And then on the case back, unlike the original marine chronometers, Ulysse Norden gives you a display. Now, there is a customized rotor on the UN Caliber 26, the rose gold rotor covering the Caliber 26 based on an ETA Caliber 2892A2. This one is delivered in the highest grade that ETA supplies, so chronometer specifications. So it's been through the COSC's two-week battery. Six positions, three temperatures, two weeks, earned Swiss chronometer status by virtue of not exceeding a deviation of negative four seconds or plus six seconds per day. It's very accurate and it's keeping with the marine chronometer heritage of this essential look. But it's also equipped with the beautifully guilloshade rose gold winding rotor that really speaks to the attention to detail that Ulysse Norden has imparted into this piece. Even small elements like the winding mechanism, fully customized, beautifully finished, really enjoyable case back display on a thin, fine, and tough movement. And I want to emphasize that for a sports watch, this is absolutely the right choice of movement because the 2892A2, especially in its non-coaxial form, is just the kind of movement that will take a licking and keep on ticking. I had one in a Bond Omega Seamaster and I crashed it during a bike wipeout and it was a road bike wipeout. I'm talking 20 miles an hour plus. I was in far worse shape than the watch. So this is a tough little movement in spite of being less than four millimeters thick and automatic. Now you can see everything about this watch is executed to a high standard. Substantial in its details, in its heft, in its execution, mechanically sound from a horological perspective, very accurate, automatic winding, power reserve, jump date, 
with the versatility of a sports watch, this is a set it and forget it kind of timepiece that you can wear just about all the time with a beautiful color scheme that would complement almost any attire short of a t-shirt and shorts, and heck, maybe even those. This watch is an outstanding candidate if you're looking for the ideal summer companion for 2015.